Okay, welcome. Uh, this is another episode of Mr. Dahlstrom's pre-AP Physics notes. Uh, this is <clears throat> an introduction to free fall and uh, basically the difference in equations from what we did with horizontal acceleration. So first of all, the basically what we talked about in class, this is for my online learners or people that are at home. Uh, free fall notes is basically vertical acceleration. So the last quiz that we had was horizontal acceleration. You can be moving to the right and slowing down or speeding up, moving to the left, speed, uh, slowing down or speeding up, um, but we were moving perfectly in the horizontal direction. Now we're looking at vertical acceleration, which we call free fall. Um, and this, so because of this free fall, we're saying that two, really two or three things, what this means is that the only acceleration is gravity. So yes, is it possible that there could ever be a problem where, yes, you have a rocket that is accelerating with gravity, that is a possibility, but that's not in our, oops, sorry, that's a school bell. That's not what we call free fall here. So the only acceleration is gravity. Gravity, uh, or the acceleration due to gravity, how in this class we write, we, th we write the acceleration of gravity is that we just write lowercase g. Sometimes you may say it a sub g, but we use g in this class, and it's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Once again, sometimes you use 9.8, sometimes 9.81. I like using 9.81. Uh, we have to remember what that meters per second squared means here and what this negative means as well. This doesn't mean less than zero. Once again, in terms of vertical, uh, up is positive traditionally and down is negative. So this means that my acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared downward. Or another way of saying it, meters per second per second is that every second acceler the acceleration due to gravity is causing an object to speed up uh, 9.81 meters per second downward every second. So the first second, 9.81 meters per second. The second second, now it's traveling 19.62 meters per second downward, and, and so on and so forth. <coughs> now we have seen some videos like Mythbusters where they did talk about terminal velocity, and that's basically happening when you have air resistance matching basically the force of gravity. Free fall, and basically all of physics one that we're in here, we are never going to deal with air resistance, uh, and so there will never be air resistance. Now, some people argue, saying, well, is that really physics here? We have to understand that everything falls at the same exact rate. The only reason that we may see a rock and a leaf not falling at the same rate is we have air resistance. So if we're really going to study how the universe works, uh, specifically gravity, then we really have to look at the scenario where there's no air resistance here, and we have this constant acceleration. Uh, we talked, I think I talked about before that you can't use the kinematic equations if you don't have constant uh, acceleration. So in order for us to use equations that don't involve calculus, we have to ignore air resistance. And really for, you know, I talked about in class today, if I were to drop, you know, a piece of paper uh, and I were, to, I were to drop a ball, that they would fall at the same exact rate, but the reason that the ball looks like it falls faster is that the paper is being affected by air resistance. If I were to take this same paper and crumple it up into a ball, it would fall at the exact same, same rate there. <coughs> and so just keep that in mind that there won't be any air resistance uh, in, this, in this class. So here are free fall kinematic equations. Uh, they're very similar to the ones that we had before. Uh, the only difference now is that we're trying to basically explain the y version, the vertical version of each of these. So um, Basically, every time we had a delta x is now a delta y. Every time we had a vi, we now need to denote as vi y as because of the y direction, so initial velocity. Vf, final velocity, is now vf y. A becomes g, and t doesn't have a doesn't have a direction, so t is still t. Now, th the nice thing about this. Uh, being in free fall here is where when we did horizontal, acceleration may have been something that we actually had to solve for uh, or something that we didn't know. Uh, as long as we are on Earth, and you should always assume that the problems are taking place on Earth unless otherwise stated, this g value is a, is a known value that will always be there. So that's something that's kind of a little bit uh, helpful uh, in the endeavor in terms of solving, solving this. So like I said, the delta x's have changed into delta y's. The VIs have turned into VIYs. Uh, the um, VF have turned into VFYs right here. And the G A's have turned into G's. And all the times are still times. So that's, that's basically what I want to talk about there. I'm going to go ahead and flip over here to, uh, <coughs> actually, I'll go ahead and just uh, turn that video off and make two, two separate ones. That's basically what we talked about in class. 
Uh, and then I'll have another video up here that actually has some of our free fall problem solving. So appreciate you watching. Um, we'll get to the free fall number one worksheet here in the next video. Thanks for watching.